Let's all go back to Bio 101. This is a cell. Okay, maybe we should fast forward a little bit. We know that eukaryotic cells usually divide by means of mitosis. In this process, the parent cell duplicates its chromosomes before the division so that the two resulting daughter cells receive identical sets of chromosomes, and thus the number of chromosomes is preserved. There is another, more specialized form of cell division known as meiosis that occurs in sexually reproducing eukaryotes. Similar to mitosis, meiosis begins with chromosome duplication in the original parent cell. However, that parent cell then divides twice so that the four granddaughter cells are produced with half the number of chromosomes. These granddaughter cells become reproductive cells or gametes, which later fuse in fertilization to form a single diploid zygote. For many organisms, sex is determined by the sex chromosome that the gamete of the heterogametic parent contributes to the zygote. In humans, other mammals, and many insects, the male has an X and a Y chromosome, while the female just has two X chromosomes. Therefore, the male is the heterogametic sex, and ultimately the sex of the offspring depends on whichever sex chromosome the fused sperm cell is carrying. That's not to say that the XXXY system is the only form of genotypic sex determination. Birds, snakes, and butterflies have a ZZZW system in which the female is the heterogametic sex. But where does that leave reptiles, you might ask? Well, reptiles are fascinating subjects in the study of sex determination and sex chromosome evolution because they're so diverse. Turtles and lizards tend to have XXXY systems, Snakes usually display female heterogamity, and alligators and crocodiles lack sex chromosomes altogether. Instead, their sex is determined by temperature during a critical period of embryonic development. Moreover, numerous transitions have occurred among these mechanisms over the course of hundreds of millions of years. Because of these frequent and rapid transitions, many species' sex chromosomes have scarcely differentiated rendering them homomorphic. Researchers simply can't distinguish them in a karyotype. They are impossible to tell apart. Fortunately, new techniques involving restriction site-associated DNA sequencing, also known as RADSeq, and bioinformatics have allowed researchers to begin studying these homomorphic systems. For my project, I am trying to determine the sex chromosome system of an adorable marbled gecko from southern Australia known as Christinus marmoratus. Previous studies suggest that Christinus has non-homologous sex chromosomes with female heterogamity. In addition, it appears that this sex determination mechanism has a relatively recent origin, independent of that of other gecko species with female heterogamity, such as gecko halcoensis. This suggests that a transition has occurred from one ZW system to another, derived from a separate autosomal pair. In order to confirm this hypothesis, I need to identify the sex chromosome linkage group of Christinus marmoratus that contains sex-specific markers. First, I'll analyze the sequences of sex-linked DNA scaffolds previously collected from RADSeq in a program called Genius in order to find W and Z-specific alleles. I will then use PCR as well as qPCR to validate my findings. If I successfully find the sex chromosome linkage group and confirm the ZZZW system of Christinus, I will go on to ask the question, is the sex chromosome linkage group of Christinus marmoratus conserved in other species of gecko? The answer to this question will give new insights into the evolution of gecko sex chromosomes and deepen our understanding of sex determination as a whole.